I'm Stephanie Jaworski of joybaking.com. Today we're going to make cranberry shortbread bars and this is what they look like. This bar has two layers of buttery crisp shortbread and in between you have a tart and tangy cranberry filling. So we're going to start by making our cranberry filling which is really like a really thick cranberry sauce. So you will need a saucepan and then you will need eight ounces, which is two and a quarter cups or 225 grams of fresh cranberries. Now, always wash your cranberries and then pick through them. You don't want any soft ones because actually fresh cranberries are quite hard. And if you drop one, it will bounce. That's how you know. So let's put those in here. And you, if you don't have fresh, you could use frozen cranberries as well. And then, of course, Cranberries are really sour tasting, so you will need two-thirds of a cup, which is 135 grams of granulated white sugar. If you've ever eaten a, a cranberry, you know how sour it is. And then we need a little bit of water. Three tablespoons, which is 35 grams of water. If you've ever made cranberry sauce, you know you need a lot more water than this, but we want a really thick sauce here. So. Um, just put your heat on medium-high and then just stir it occasionally to make sure that the sugar dissolves and we're going to bring it up to a boil. Okay, so now we're up to a boil. So I'm going to adjust the heat. I want it at a, still at a boil but not like a roaring boil, just a nice boil. And we're going to cook it until our cranberries kind of soften a lot of them will burst open and the sauce will become thick and syrupy i'm going to depending on how much of a boil you have that will take about five minutes okay i have our cranberry filling is done let's take it off the heat just pour it in here so you can see what it looks like okay so as you can see kind of like a really thick cranberry sauce. A lot of the cranberries have burst open. So now I'm just going to put that aside to cool and clean up and next up we're going to make our shortbread batter. So for our shortbread batter, first preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 180 degrees Celsius. And then you will need a nine inch square baking pan. That's 23 centimeters. And I'm gonna butter the pan. You could also just spray it with one of those nonstick sprays. When I butter a pan, I just melt a little bit of butter and then I use a pastry brush. I find that the easiest way. Make sure you get in the corners. Okay. And then to make the batter, if you have a stand mixer, then use your paddle attachment. You could use a hand mixer. Or really, when you make a shortbread dough, all we're gonna all we're really trying to do is mix all the ingredients together. We're not going to incorporate a lot of air because we want a nice dense textured shortbread. So you could just use a bowl with a wooden spoon. The first ingredient you need is one cup, which is 225 grams of butter. Have your butter at room temperature. Now you could use uh, salted or unsalted, your preference. I'm using unsalted. I prefer the flavor, but you know, it's up to you. So now I'm just going to uh, beat this on medium speed just until it gets nice and creamy and smooth. that down and then we're actually making a brown sugar shortbread so you will need a third of a cup which is 75 grams of firmly packed light brown sugar and then I'm also adding one teaspoon four grams of pure vanilla extract that's for flavoring so if you prefer not to have a little bit of um, vanilla flavoring then you can just leave that out so what I'm going to do is just beat this on medium speed until it's mixed together. Okay, looks good. Scrape down the sides and the bottom of your bowl as much as you need to to make sure all those ingredients get mixed together. 
And then in a separate bowl, I have two cups, which is 260 grams of all-purpose flour. You may know that as plain flour. To that, I'm adding a half a teaspoon, two grams of salt. I like to use the kosher salt. It has a milder flavor than the um, table salt, but you could use either one and whisk that together. Now, if you were using salted butter, I just, I would leave out that salt. So now, last ingredient, shortbreads are easy to make. So I'm just gonna put that in here. And then you want to uh, start your mixer on low speed. You don't want that flour coming up in your face. And then we're just going to mix this together. We don't want a solid ball of dough. When it starts to kind of clump together, that's when you need to stop mixing. Okay, I'm going to stop now. So I'll show you. We don't have, it's not a solid ball, it's just starting to clump together. So that's when you stop. Let's make sure I got all that flour mixed in. So now we're going to take about two thirds of this batter and press it into our pan. So if you have a scale, I mean, you can eyeball it, but a scale makes it really easy. You need to take 370 grams. It's about two thirds. So that's what I'm gonna do. Okay, we're, that's good. Let's put that aside. We are going to use that. We're going to put that on the top. So just, just kind of break it up here. Makes it a little easier if I spread all this over the pan. We're just going to press it into an even layer. You can use a spoon. I typically just use my fingers to do this. Press it in. Okay, that feels pretty even. Now we are going to pre-bake this, the bottom crust, so that it gets nice and crispy. So what you want to do is just take a fork and then just kind of lightly score the bottom kind of prevent it from puffing up. And then we're going to bake this just until the like the round the edges start to get take on a little bit of brown. And the top becomes just very lightly browned. So I find, you know, 17, 18 somewhere somewhere around there. So around 18 minutes. <laughs> So our shortbread are done. As you can see, very lightly brown, just starting brown around the edges. So put your pan on a wire rack. I am going to let this cool maybe five minutes, so, but leave your oven on. And then we're going to put on the cranberry sauce and the shortbread and finish baking our shortbreads. So now what we're going to do is take our cranberry filling and put it top of our baked shortbread. Leave a little bit of a border around the edge there. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Try to get an even layer. And then take the rest of your shortbread batter and then we're just going to just kind of scatter it over the top. That looks good. And then what I like to do, and be careful because you know your pan's still hot, is just gently press that down into the filling. And then we're going to bake this. 
same oven temperature for about 25 30 minutes and what you're looking for is it'll be set in beautiful golden brown so somewhere in the 25 to 30 minutes and don't forget to have your oven mitts on that hot pan Our cranberry shortbread bars are done. They gorgeous, beautifully golden brown. So now we do need to cut our uh, shortbread into our bars while it's still warm, but not this warm. So what I'm gonna do is let this sit about 10 minutes and then when we come back, we will cut them into squares. So now with the sharp knife, all we're gonna do is cut through. So I'm going to, this size pan, I'm going to cut into, I think about 16 individual bars. So this way, and then turn the pan and do the same. And then what we're going to do is let these cool completely so that the uh, shortbread firms up. And then when we come back, we will try one. Okay, so let's try one. Get this out. There we go. Oh, doesn't that look gorgeous? You can see the two layers of shortbread with the cranberry filling in between. So, oh, there we go. Just cut a little piece off here. When you pre-bake that bottom crust, what you end up with is a really nice, buttery, crisp shortbread on the top and on the bottom. And then contrast that to the really tart and tangy cranberry filling. It's a very nice combination. Now, if you eat them the day they're made, you will really notice that difference between the flavor of the shortbread and then the cranberry filling will be really tart. But if you cover and store them in the refrigerator for a day or two, the flavors kind of, the cranberry filling, the flavor kind of mellows and then blends in with the shortbread. I don't know. I like them both ways. I don't know which way is better. So um, you can store them in the refrigerator probably five days or so. And of course, they can be frozen. So try these. And until next time, I'm Stephanie Jaworski of joyofbaking.com. Thank you.